out, there's something wrong with this galaxy. This is a really well-known galaxy, NGC 5084. We've got observations of it dating back to the 80s, but astronomers have just noticed something doesn't quite make sense. The supermassive black hole at the center of this galaxy is not pointing the right way. It's on its side. Something that just shouldn't be possible. What's going on? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let me tell you about the lopsided black hole. It's pretty much well established that at the center of every galaxy is a supermassive black hole. A black hole is a thing that has so much mass and so much gravity that not even light can escape it. But a supermassive black hole, as its name suggests, is characterized by that enormous mass, hundreds of thousands to billions of times the mass of our sun. Now picture this, a dark spherical silhouette representing the event horizon of the black hole. That's the boundary beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape its gravitational pull. The size of the event horizon is directly proportional to the black hole's mass. At the center of a black hole is a singularity, a point of infinite density where all the mass is crushed into an infinitely small space. Here, all the physics we know breaks down. Now, the supermassive black holes come in two types. AGN, which stands for active galactic nuclei, which as the name suggests, is an actively feeding black hole, or the second type, quiescent supermassive black holes, which are dormant. AGNs are typically surrounded by a swirling disk of gas, dust, and other matter called an accretion disk. You see, the material around a black hole doesn't get sucked in like you might think or like people tend to talk about. Instead, it forms a rotating disk due to conservation of angular momentum. As matter, gas and dust, spirals into the black hole, the particles rub against each other, generating immense amounts of friction. And this heats the material to incredibly high temperatures as it spirals inwards, emitting vast amount of radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum. It gets brighter and denser towards the center of the black hole, where the temperatures can reach millions of degrees Kelvin. And this emits primarily in the X-rays and extreme ultraviolet wavelengths. The supermassive black hole, as I said, is embedded within the center of a galaxy, a sprawling disk filled with stars, gas, and dust, and powerful jets of highly energetic particles are ejected from the poles of the black hole perpendicular to the accretion disk of the black hole and perpendicular to the galactic plane. Now, here's the twist. Astronomers have just discovered an AGN in an edge-on galaxy, instead of jets directed out of the plane of the galaxy like you might have expected. They're aligned with it. Now, based on our current understanding, this doesn't really make any sense. And this is because both the galaxy and the black hole's accretion disk are believed to have formed in the same initially rotating cloud of gas and dust. The law of conservation of momentum dictates that the spin should be aligned. So this means that the accretion disk should spin in the same plane as the galaxy, and the jets which are launched perpendicular to the disk should therefore shoot out perpendicular to the galaxy's plane. And decades of observations of various galaxies have always shown that jets emerge perpendicular to the galactic plane. There are no known examples of jets aligned with the disk. Until now. Astronomers were using NASA's X-ray telescope Chandra in the search for diffuse X-ray emission to study hot gas halos around galaxies. These halos tell us about the processes of gas accretion and removal, which are really important in figuring out how galaxies form and then evolve. But during their search, they found something peculiar, two plumes of plasma, one extending above and below the disk of the galaxy and another extending along the disk, marking the shape of a cross. Now, this is weird because hot gas halos are usually spherical or elliptical structures. This had never been seen before. To investigate further, the astronomers then looked in optical wavelengths with the Hubble Space Telescope, and intriguingly, they found a dusty disk. 
This coincidentally aligns with the majority of the X-ray emission. So just for good measure, using the radio telescope ALMA, um, they detected the emission from carbon monoxide molecules. And this showed that the disk was rotating at 250 kilometers per second speeds. This indeed was the supermassive black hole accretion disk. Using the radio telescope, the Very Large Array, or VLA for short, this telescope detects even longer wavelengths than ALMA, and that allowed it to study a variety of phenomena like synchrotron radiation from electrons accelerated in magnetic fields. In NGC 5084, VLA detected synchrotron emission from the galaxy's core and two symmetric radio lobes, precisely what you'd expect to see from the center of an active galactic nucleus, an AGN and its associated jets. There was no doubt about it, this black hole is on its side. Now, the unusual cross-shaped morphology would suggest that there's a complex interplay of galactic outflows happening, large-scale movements of gas expelled from the galaxy. These outflows are typically related to AGN or starburst activity. And in the case of AGNs, as the black hole pulls in surrounding material, it will release tremendous amounts of energy in the form of radiation and in its powerful jets. These jets can interact with the gas in the galaxy, creating shocks and driving outflows. And in the case of starburst galaxies, which are those with exceptionally high rates of star formation, the massive stars born in these events have very short lifespans and end in powerful supernova explosions. These explosions, along with strong stellar winds, form the massive stars, inject massive amounts of energy into the surrounding gas and heating it and propelling it outwards, driving um, outflows. In NGC 5084, there's three possible scenarios for the formation of the observed cross-shaped X-ray emission. Reorientation of the AGN jet, overpressurized cocoon of hot gas, or a faded starburst. It may have been that the vertical X-ray emission was generated in a previous orientation of the AGN, which changed dramatically due to, for example, if it had merged with another galaxy. In this scenario, what we're seeing then is emission before and after the merger. We've got an imprint of both. Or the second scenario is that the AGN's jets are interacting with the dense gas in the galaxy's disk, which could create an expanding bubble of hot gas. This bubble would preferentially vent along the galaxy's minor axis perpendicular to the disk of the galaxy, producing the vertical component of the X-shaped emission. Or lastly, it could be that one or more gas-rich accretion events drove gas into the galaxy's core, which could have triggered a starburst-driven galactic wind, activated the AGN, generating the observed horizontal X-ray emission. The observations lack evidence for recent or ongoing star formation in the core, so that last scenario is highly unlikely. But most likely, it's going to be that first one, the merger. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week, but if you want to know more, I'll link the paper down below. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe. Hey, space cats, fly with me to the stars Faster than light Soaring past Mars Unveiling the cosmos New worlds to explore